Hello, welcome to the first ever members only virtual tour. My name is Natasha D'Souza and I am Director of Development at the Patricia and Philip Frost Art Museum, FIU. We are so thrilled to have you um, here on the call with us today. Uh, looks like we have 16 attendees so far. I'm sure people are still trickling in. Um, hi, Diney. Hi, Eileen, Gamma, Jean, uh, Jane. We have so many um, awesome members here today. Um, I know that during these difficult times, uh, staying connected has been challenging, so we really wanted to create an opportunity for our members to be able to interact with each other, to be able to get a behind the scenes look at some of our exhibitions, and to be able to interact with our curators. So um, I'm really glad that you joined us today, and I hope that you enjoy this exclusive members only perk. So I wanted to start by just giving you a couple of housekeeping items. Uh, first, to all, let you all know that this is being recorded and it will be available on our website um, in the digital experience section. Next, we are leaving the chat box open throughout the duration of this presentation. So feel free to say hello to your fellow members or if you wish to everybody. Um, finally, we're going to be using the Q&A function to ask questions. So you see um, below in your screen, you should see um, a little icon that says Q&A. So please use this area to ask any questions that you may have. You can ask a question at any point throughout the presentation. Uh, we'll be pausing to answer questions and uh, we hope to get to everybody. So uh, ask your questions there. And now that we've got our housekeeping out of the way, I'll turn the program over to us, Chief Curator, Dr. Amy Galpin. Thank you, Natasha. And thank you to all of you for joining us this afternoon for a tour of Liu Shiwen Opaque Pollination. I want to extend my gratitude to all of you as supporters and members of the Frost your membership means so much to us. I want to tell you a little bit about this exhibition uh, from a sort of behind the scenes uh, point of view, you know, starting with how did it ever come to be? Uh, this is an exhibition that I felt really passionate about bringing to our museum. Uh, the work of Liu Shi Wen is really engaging from a global vantage point. The artist was born in Beijing, China in 1985. Uh, she studied in New York at the School of the Visual Arts, and she currently lives in Copenhagen in Denmark. And she brings a really global, transcultural point of view to her work. It's not as though she doesn't recognize cultural difference. She feels it every day. Um, but she kind of explores ways in which we all can connect. And sometimes that's through the use or consuming, rather, of images or the way we use the internet, uh, what images mean to us, the types of questions that we might ask. I always love firsts. I like to bring our audience mem members firsts. And this exhibition is Liu Shiwen's first solo exhibition at a museum in New York, or in the US. And she has exhibited um, at her gallery in New York. She, her work is a part of the permanent collection of the Guggenheim uh, Museum in New York as well. Without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we'll get going on our virtual tour. I look forward to hearing from you throughout uh, the tour today you know, with your questions. And also we have three polls for you to participate. Uh, so I'm going to ask my colleague to begin uh, with the first poll question as I start to share my screen. So our first poll is, did you have the opportunity to see this exhibition in person? And it looks like uh, almost half of you have seen it in person and, and half of you have not. So um, I love that. That's, that's really, really great. Um, we'll stop the poll. So first I wanna start with the title um, of the exhibition, uh, Liu Shi Wen, 
opaque pollination. Um, Shi Wen is the artist's first name. Uh, Liu is the artist's last name. I'll refer to her by her first name throughout this exhibition. Uh, when I work with a living artist on an exhibition, it's always really important for me to work with them directly in, in the process. You know, I never want to assign a title to a show and then say, this, this is what we're going with. Um, and one of the great things about working with Shi Wen on all the steps to make this exhibition possible was she was very involved, um, but she was also flexible and adaptable. Um, this particular exhibition, she proposed um, the title of the show, um, Opaque Pollination. Um, I love this title, opaque, you know, non-transparent, um, and pollination, of course, an evocation of bees, also of this idea of, of replication, of, of growth, um, you know, of, of life itself. Um, Liu Shiwen's work is not transparent. Um, it is conceptual. You know, she privileges the idea behind the work over the material manifestation uh, of, of the work itself. One of my favorite quotes that she's ever said, and, and of course I'm, I'm paraphrasing a bit, but she said, you know, the work doesn't give advice, it asks questions. Um, and I, I really love that. I love that not only as a way to think about her work, but, but also quite frankly, um, to think about a lot of, of different artists' works. So we're moving into the exhibition here on our virtual tour. If I ever go too fast, you know, it'll just be for a moment. So you can just look away uh, for, for a second and then um, I'll, I'll stop our view. So, here you have um, one of the works that was included in the exhibition titled As Simple as Clay. Uh, it's an installation. Um, you're, you see a number of photographic prints along the wall. There are 512 unique images I, and then the images start repeating. In addition to the prints on the wall, you see three postcard stands. Uh, these postcards also had images that were of the set of 512. Visitors were invited to take a postcard when they visited the exhibition. There was no cost. You know, the artist is playing with this idea of the commodification of contemporary art, you know, or what does it mean for a work of art to not be touchable or not be accessible? You know, visitors were invited to directly engage uh, with the installation. I hadn't seen this work in person before. I had seen uh, Shi Wen's work in person, um, a few of the um, works from her series, almost like Rebar, that we'll see in a moment. But this particular installation, I, I fell in love with um, on, on the internet, which is sort of interesting because um, it's very much inspired by the internet, the way in which we use the internet. You know, the artist is really interrogating uh, the process of, you know, Google searches. She's mining the internet for different images that came up when she searched the word clay in different languages. I'm sure we've all had the experience of searching something on the internet and maybe in Google, you hit images and you hit search. And by the time you get to page two or three, suddenly what you initially searched for, the images aren't matching up. I find this all the time. This happens to me when I search artist names because the first few images are um, the artist's work and then slowly it starts going into singers or sports players or, or, or various other uh, noteworthy individuals. So some of the images in this installation, they relate to the notion of clay very closely. There's artifacts you know, related to kilns um, but some of the images are, are quite different. Um, you see a lot of connections to soft materials, whether it's bread or cheese or butter. One of the things that the artist was doing or sort of thinking about when uh, she made this installation was studying a new language. She had recently moved to Copenhagen 
And she was thinking about the act of molding clay. Like imagine if you had clay or um, even Play-Doh and every time you twisted it or formed the shape differently, you know, that could be analogous to learning a new word or a new perspective. Um, and, you know, sometimes when we learn languages, it's nice to have these kind of metaphors or these visualizations. Um, there was um, a friar, a, rather a priest working in, in Japan who spoke um, about something called a memory palace in the 17th century, about Im imagining, you know, as you're learning a new language, um, each word related to a room in a palace. Um, you know, it, it's kind of a far-fetched comparison, but I, I love the idea of molding clay representing uh, a different word or a different um, term or thought. You know, language, learning a language or translating a language is an art form. You know, we could debate the, you know, the intricacies um, of language, you know, particularly a language like Spanish um, in, in, in our city all the time. These prints were produced at Walgreens, which is something I, I love sharing. Um, and it sort of relates to that notion of the commodification of contemporary art. Uh, we produced this installation at the Walgreens on 107 across from FIU. Um, I, uh, the team at Walgreens was great collaborators. I went there one afternoon and um, helped to order the prints. And I remember they called me and they said, ma'am, we're not going to be able to fill this order today. Um, and, and I loved that because, um, you know, they were, they were trying to help me so much. And, and of course, you know, I, I knew that it would be impossible to reproduce all of these images in one day. But that's also some of the reason why you can see this sort of gradation of different blues in the work. Um, you know, the artist leaves something up to chance here, you know, where uh, the work is printed, not necessarily like a fine art photography printer, where the blues are going to be all uh, even. I'm going to sort of spin around a little bit and give you an overall view of the galleries. Something that you can see from this vantage point, you know, where we're standing there, we're sort of immersed in this dark wall, dark gray walls, and then across the galleries, you see a lighter gray. Uh, the artist completely consulted with us on the design and uh, everything down to the paint colors for the exhibition. We went through a lot of different ideas with her about how we would realize as simple as clay, different paint color choices. Um, but she liked this idea of combining light and dark gray. Uh, and in fact, um, there is a projection room in the exhibition behind the curtain over there where three different videos by the artist are presented and the walls in there are even uh, a darker gray. So I'm going to ask uh, my colleague uh, Jocelyn to put up the second poll for you while I move into our other gallery. Uh, this is my favorite poll that we're going to ask you because it's a poll um, about art and I'd love to know what kinds of art you like looking at. So our different choices are contemporary, modern, 16th century, either in Europe or in Latin America, or ancient, everything from pre-Columbian to art of Egypt, uh, art of Greece, uh, and, and beyond. Well, I, I must say, as a curator of modern and contemporary art, I, I'm pretty thrilled to see the strong results um, that I'm seeing from uh, contemporary art, the more recent, the better, and modern, I like Picasso and Monet. Very interesting that we have no fans of ancient art currently participating uh, in, in the poll. I'm going to go ahead and stop this poll and talk to you next here about, um, oh, somebody did, I just want to say we did have one person then chime in and say they liked ancient art. So good, ancient art is not unaccounted for uh, amongst our members today. 
This installation is called F It, I Love You. Um, you know, uh, Shi Wen is uh, definitely someone who plays with text and kind of irreverent uh, titles. Um, this piece here, a lot of people ask about how was it made. It is carpet tiles um, and she ordered um, sort of this text to be printed on the individual carpet tiles. And we have kind of an adhesive, a special adhesive behind the carpet tiles and they're applied directly uh, to the wall. Something that's really special about this installation is that the artist was present um, throughout the process. Uh, she decided which of the carpet tiles would be included in our installation. Um, she chose the placement, et cetera. Um, you know, having that engagement, it makes, I think, an exhibition uh, so special. Uh, and the artist was able to travel uh, from Copenhagen to join us. One of the things um, that the artist is playing with a bit here is kind of creating a, a, a space, which she was thinking of the space as cozy. Uh, when you look at the furniture that is in front of Effet I Love You, you might not think of it entirely as, as cozy, um, but you know, it creates a, a certain sensibility. Getting back to this notion of commodification in art, it was really important to Shi Wen um, that our team participate somehow in the installation. So the furniture actually comes from different staff members, um, either from their home or from their offices. Uh, uh, for example, this black stool here that you see uh, comes from the home of our manager of strategic initiatives. Um, the floor lamp actually comes from Natasha's uh, de uh, office, rather, um, at, at the museum. You know, the artist was really interested in, in playing with the furniture and kind of creating a unique uh, sensibility. The texts that you see in the installation, um, it was a collaboration between the artist and her assistant at the time, uh, who was also from China. Um, they were thinking about the structure of Chinese poetry. Uh, they were also in, in part kind of creating a script and thinking about constructed worlds. You know, social media is a constructed world, right? The idea when what we post on Facebook is often maybe the third image that we took, not the first image that we took. Um, and so that idea of creating sort of facades or creating um, these imaginary spaces was also very much behind this work. Some of the phrases are a little um, irreverent, wonderful and velvety, purring and twisting on its back. It begs for dinner, but receives only looks of disdain. One of the things that Shi Wen talked about in the creation of her work is that she loves how different audiences respond to the work. And she said she's always been drawn to the fact that US audiences, audience, audiences in the United States will laugh at the work. Um, that they sometimes can find a sort of sense of humor uh, in, in her phrasing and not become as obsessed with, oh, I have to know exactly uh, what, what this means. Just going to move back out here. I am going to do a little bit of a spin. So um, if, if visually it, it, it bothers you, you might want to just look away for a moment. As we come back around here, I want to look at the series um, almost like rebar. Uh, it's a series of photographic collages when the artist was, uh, from a young age, she was interested in being an artist. And when the artist was studying in university, she focused on painting. And it's interesting because there's really only one work in the show that we could classify as a painting. Um, but she talks about with this photographic collage series, almost like rebar, approaching it from a painterly uh, point of view. Uh, oftentimes what she went is using in the work is stock photography. So sometimes she combines her own photographic images and mixes them with stock photography. Other times the works are composed solely of stock photography. Uh, for her, you know, that question, uh, she likes that idea, right, of mixing um, authorship. 
Hi. And also, one of the things I think is really interesting to explore, sometimes stock photography gets a bad rap, you know, in terms of people who operate in the quote unquote art world, they think of stock photography as commercial. But she Wen talks about the incredible technical skill, often the narrative that underlines uh, stock photography uh, and, and being drawn to it very deeply. She confesses to spending hours on the internet, kind of losing herself um, in, in images of stock photography. Here, what you see on your screen is an image of a woman in a white dress. She appears to be kind of twirling around in a field. Um, and, you know, that's sort of a trope, right? It's like a trope of a romantic movie or like a rom-com, you know, this woman sort of in a white dress twirling around and in open nature. When we think about different things that we search on the internet, you know, there's a lot of images of animals. There's a lot of images of food. There's a lot of images of nature. A lot of times when we first get a laptop computer or a desktop computer, the images that are programmed as our desktop um, are of nature, of lakes, of mountains. You know, when we look at Shi Wen's work, we can ask the question, you know, how is it different to experience nature on a screen versus experiencing it in, in person? A particular thing I think is interesting about this work, it's one of the reasons why I have this real close up image here, is you see the artist's hand drawn lines um, on the frame. So that's a very interesting juxtaposition, you know, using stock imagery, but then also combining it with this delicately hand decorated frame. Other things that I think about when I look at this woman in the dress are stop motion uh, videos time-lapse videos. I think about the history of photography and early photographs um, of sequences of people moving uh, or animals moving. I think about how is an image constructed? What do we crop out of an image? Uh, and even though, you know, for some, this might be kind of a beautiful connection, sort of that they see a very strong synthesis between the images of the tree and the images of the woman here in the field. Others might find it more jarring. But if you find it jarring, I think that also replicates the experience that we have on the internet every day. One moment I might be, you know, looking online of images of golden retrievers. And then the next moment, I'm Googling something very serious about what's going on uh, in the world right now. And so we're constantly moving back and forth between different types of images, different types of information. It's said that we all see more than a thousand images uh, every, every day. I know I'm, I'm chatting quite a bit, so, and I'm hoping that we're having some, some good questions coming, coming through. Um, I want to encourage you to use the, the Q&A box. I think my colleague Natasha is also going to be checking the, the Q&A box out. Um, this is to me a very special image in the almost like rebar series. Um, I'm going to come up close to it and then I'll, I'll go back away. It's also a, a work in the series where the artist is using uh, hand-drawn frames. It's also a work where we see a lot of those connections of, you know, stop motion, um, you know, that replication um, of images that we see, for example, in a time lapse video. One of the things that's really special about this work is the connection to motherhood. Um, so you see an infant and mother, you know, the infant is breastfeeding. You also see in this work connections, maternal connections between uh, various animals. And I think that, you know, motherhood is actually a, a thread that runs throughout this exhibition. It is something that's not as, you know, present. You, know, you kind of have to sort of look for it. Um, but, you know, the artist doesn't shy away from the fact that she is a mother. Um, and that her being a mother uh, influences uh, the work. Uh, for example, in the video projection room, uh, you see um, a reference to a childbirth. You see reference to an infant. 
Um, and here, uh, in another part of the show, you see the image um, of, of breastfeeding. There's actually an artist talk on the internet with Liu Shiwen, and she's introduced by one of her mentors, uh, the photographer Penelope Umbrico. And Penelope talks about how the fact that very early on, you know, in her graduate school process, she went was not shy about the fact that she was interested in, in being a mother and how that was unusual at the time to have a student in the, in the graduate school that would bring that. And I, I think it's very interesting how everything that she went is, is very present in, in the work. You know, you could come into this exhibition and sort of focus on perhaps the sort of theoretical underpinnings. Um, but we see the artist as well. It might not be as literal as we often look uh, for those types of readings, uh, but, but they are present there too. You know, the artist grew up in China during a, a period of tremendous change of technological advances, of pop culture um, assimilation, assimilation um, globalization. Um, and so that is really formative um, in, in her identity as, as an artist. You know, she's really interested in sort of formally, you know, the notion of positive and negative space. And that's something that we see in these collages, but in a very unique way. Um, you know, she almost creates the negative space by using uh, these irregularly shaped frames. This work is sort of interesting too, because um, you can see, uh, it's a, I'm trying to zoom in a little bit, but you can see these two little angels, these porcelain angels at the bottom. You know, again, that using of stock imagery, the using of things that some people might be dismissive of or see as cheesy, um, but instead the way the artist kind of elevates it um, in, in her work. And, you know, that's the same thing we see in the furniture, you know, coming back to this installation here. You know, this little light that our curatorial assistant brought from her home, this little table that our um, chief curator of education brought from her home. Um, you know, these are pieces of furniture that were maybe on their way out of the house, <laughs> um, but here they have new meaning um, in this installation by Xi Wen, Liu Xi Wen. Perhaps I'll just wrap up with showing you this last piece here. Um, this piece is called uh, Music Forbidden. Uh, one of the things I think is also really special about Shi Wen's work is she talks about how, you know, it always changes. Uh, for her, you know, every time the work is exhibited, there are different choices um, that, that are made. You know, even just the choice to present this work here on the light gray wall, um, you know, in conversation with this particular installation uh, is, is different than past choices. You know, Shi Wen thinks about the idea of production, you know, where are materials made, um, you know, using both items that she makes and then items that are found. This piece here, this I would say is the one painting in the exhibition, and she's actually used this material. It's like a leopard um, type cost. It could be used for a costume, for example. Uh, and she stretched it, um, well, just like an artist might stretch a canvas around the stretcher bars. You know, here we have this, this print, this animal print. Um, and then she's painted over the animal print. Um, and so in areas of this gray paint, you actually see the texture um, of the animal print. Uh, in other areas, she doesn't paint and you just see the animal print itself. Um, the artist has used literal clay. Um, so before we were talking about an installation called As Simple as Clay, she's actually used clay fragments in this work. And also these white things that look like letters or documents. Um, they are documents that the artist is actually presenting in clay. Um, and the documents reference um, space exploration and they reference um, condolences that a leader might offer if an astronaut um, died unexpectedly, unexpectedly while in space. 
And so the artist is thinking about, you know, again, this notion of technological advance, um, the human toll of technological advance, um, you know, the emotional pathos of, of technological exploration um, through, through space. Uh, one of the reasons why I, I wanted to end with this piece, Music Forbidden, you know, it includes painting and textile and clay. You know, the artist may have trained as a painter at university, but she works in a lot of different media. When I visited her studio in Copenhagen, she was actually working on a series of drawings for a fourth show at her gallery uh, in, in New York. So that gives you a little bit of a sense um, of the exhibition. I'm going to turn around here so you get a little bit of um, an overall view. Uh, do we have any questions? We do have a question, Amy. So the question is, do you know how Liu is doing now during the pandemic? Is she residing in Copenhagen or Beijing? Thanks for the question. Yes, that is a great question. Um, she is doing really well. Um, she is currently in Copenhagen uh, with her family. Um, and um, she has, you know, been quarantined for, for much of this time. Uh, things are beginning to open up um, in, in Copenhagen. So, of course, as, as we watch the news, we see, you know, different countries um, sort of going through different stages uh, of the pandemic. I know that the artist was scheduled to have a solo uh, exhibition in June at her gallery in New York. Uh, so I'm not sure if that will be able to happen, um, but I hope that um, if not this summer that we will see it um, very soon. We don't have any other questions at this time, but this could be a good moment. Oh, well, just kidding. We have one, one coming in just now from Jean Rosenberg. Um, as simple as clay is, in a sense, basically Google generated art. So let me, I'm going to go back over to it so we can be in it. Um, you know, it's an, it's an, it, I would say it's installation and the images do derive from Google searches. Um, all of the images are stock photography. Um, you know, I think there is a lot of intention uh, with the work, you know, the spacing between the prints, the number of prints, fitting the space within the installation um, that, that really make for a sort of captivating um, experience. You know, it, I think when you see this work in the galleries, I think you can see it a little bit in the virtual tour here, all the different colors of blue, you know, they're almost like these jewel tones that, that sparkle. Um, and when you walk into the space, and maybe we can feel it a little bit in the virtual tour as well, you know, you're, you're sort of engulfed in this sea of images. Um, it's almost like having this physical experience, which is very similar to uh, searching uh, on, on the internet. Great. Uh, we have another question from Gama Herrera. Um, while the work is evidently global in scope, how do you see this work within Chinese contemporary art? I think that's um, a, a really great question. Um, of everywhere that the artist has exhibited, the US, Europe, uh, she has exhibited you know, most significantly um, in China. Uh, so um, you know, she is a part of the Chinese diaspora um, and definitely the work has been in both group and so it had both group and solo presentations um, within in China. I would say, you know, I think this connection to technology um, and, you know, sort of the erasure um, of um, the self, the figure, you know, sort of interrogating um, these larger issues about how do we experience images. Um, I, I think is, is a global question. I think a lot of artists are exploring that, but I do think, you know, interrogating, um, you know, technology, the meaning of images um, is something that we see other contemporary Chinese artists doing as well. Um, and also, you know, to your question, thinking a little bit about the work, um, F It, I Love You, um, which is in the other gallery, you know, that is a work that, um, you know, is very tied to Chinese poetry 
in the structure of Chinese poetry. Um, I think we've seen, you know, a number of contemporary Chinese artists, whether it's scroll painting, um, you know, taking uh, traditional forms, ancient forms, uh, and reimagining them in the contemporary present. Great. Uh, thank you, Diney, for this question. Um, she wants to know, how did the show come to happen at the Frost? What was the connection to Miami and the museum's overall discourse? Great. Thank you. So we do have an endowment at the museum, the Jane Shaw Endowment, which helps support exhibitions um, of the arts of Asia. And we're so thankful to Jane Shaw and to have the support of this endowment. The museum has an incredible history of presenting um, significant exhibitions of contemporary um, Asian art. For example, uh, me being fairly new to Miami, only having been a resident here for two years, I am often asked about the exhibition of work of Xu Bing. Um, for me, I, I didn't want to necessarily try to replicate that success. I, want, I was interested in introducing our audiences to something new, something that they hadn't seen before. Uh, we are a museum that believes in presenting work from different time periods and different cultures. Um, we like to offer, you know, this fall we're going to have Aboriginal work, contemporary Ab Aboriginal work from Australia. Um, in the last two years, we've had contemporary uh, Indigenous artists from India. On, on view. You know, we really try to navigate lots uh, of different realities for um, our audiences and we don't try to just present, you know, work by Miami-based artists, uh, for example. Although we are, I think, as you know, um, you know, very dedicated to our Miami artists and every year we're doing exhibitions that represent work by Miami-based artists. I think for me the idea is both celebrating local and also off offering something different. Um, with this particular show, I was also really thinking about our campus community. Uh, we have BFA and MFA programs um, at, at the university and thinking about a young artist having her first solo show at a museum and really kind of incorporating some complex thinking and the use of a lot of different materials might inspire something. And, and in fact, um, I did have some success with our faculty and, and students in the art department with this exhibition. One of my favorite stories is one day I was giving a tour um, to um, an art class in, in the Liu Xiuwen exhibition and simultaneously two other art professors came in um, Un, unprepared, like on their own with students um, to see to see the exhibition. And so I, I really hoped that it would resonate um, in, in that way. Great. So Diney also has a follow up question. Um, she was curious about the title Most Like Rebar and what it could be referencing. Yeah, I think, you know, almost like rebar. So rebar, this idea of, you know, something that that binds something together, you know, something that adds support, um, you know, something like, for example, like support to concrete. Um, and when we think about uh, her photographic collages, right, there are all these different images um, that are put together, like the, in this sort of supported structure. Um, so it's not, it's not rebar, but this idea that, you know, she's creating an overall composition um, derived from diverse uh, sources. It looks like our last question here. Um, is this the first time the museum has used Matterport 360 degree camera technology for an online exhibit? Thank you for that question. It gives me an opportunity to credit Zachary Balber. Uh, Zachary Balber is an artist in our community in Miami. I worked with him on my first exhibition at the Frost of Deconstruction, which was an exhibition of Miami-based artists. And I, he introduced me to this technology and he made a virtual tour uh, of that exhibition deconstruction. And we now have seven virtual tours, all made uh, by Zachary Balber. Wonderful. So I think that wraps up our program for today. Um, thank you, Amy, for this amazing tour. And again, thank you all so much for joining us. 
um, and for the for the really nice um, Q and A and all the stuff that's written in the chat box. We really um, appreciate your kind words and hope that you continue to remain engaged with us. Um, also, I just want to thank you again for being members of the Frost Art Museum. We wouldn't be able to do any of the things that we do either virtually or um, in person without your support, and it means so much to us. So thanks so much for that. Um, I also um, encourage you to tune in for some of our upcoming programs. We are launching a series called Curator Chats, which will take place on the second Wednesday of every month on Instagram Live at 5 o'clock p.m. Um, these sessions will be lively conversations between Amy Galpin and other curators from around the country. Um, participants will have the opportunity to learn about different institutions, various approaches to curatorial practice and distinctive career paths. Uh, the first one will be taking place on Wednesday, May 13th at 5 o'clock p.m. again on Instagram Live. Amy will be in conversation with Alexander Jarman, Assistant Curator of Exhibitions and Academic Outreach at the Wellen at Hamilton College in New York. And finally, I will be sending an email tomorrow with a link to a survey that I'm really hoping that you'll take some time to complete. I promise it's very short. It's only five questions. Um, we wanna hear from you, our members, not only on how you enjoyed this tour, um, but also what types of virtual experiences you would like to see in the future. So this concludes our program. We're going to leave uh, the chat box open um, so you can continue to chat with one another and to enjoy some tunes. Thanks everyone.